Hi, I'm Travis Serio with Robert McNeil and Associates, and today I wanted to show you how to build a fleur de lis ring in Rhino 7 using the new sub D functionality. This is pretty cool, so check it out. All right, to start, I need to draw a fleur de lis, and I'm not very good at that without looking at something to trace. So I'm going to come up here to the Viewport Layout tab and click on this Add Picture Plane. And through the power of Hollywood, I have a fleur de lis right here ready to go. So I'm going to draw this out into our top view and then just sort of haphazardly uh, align it center ish. How's that? And I'll scale it down a little bit. And then in the front view, I'm going to drop it down below the Z a little bit. I'm going to start tracing over this thing, and I don't want the picture frame and my sub D objects kind of fighting for who gets to be on top. So we'll push that down a little bit. The next thing I'll do is I'll switch it to this other layer. And then lastly, I want to click the paint tube here and adjust the transparency so that I can just see it. And that way I can see my grid and stuff through there. Finally, uh, let's lock this layer so that I'm not accidentally selecting it every other moment. Okay, so uh, if you're already a Rhino user, you probably have seen this shape and you would say, I would draw a curve here and maybe mirror it to this other side, a couple cross sections, sweep, sweep, done, right? So that's certainly a great approach and um, one that, you know, we'll get it done every time and look really well. I want to do this with a sub D though, so that we have a little more flexibility over some of the push and pull. And so I'll travel up here to the sub D tools and there's a few different ways we could do this with sub D. I mean, you could still uh, draw the curves and sweep it and then convert those to sub D's or sweep as a sub D up here. But um, what I wanted to show you is how to do this sort of flat and push and pull the faces around and then thicken that up. And so um, that's a really popular workflow uh, known as edge extrusion uh, or face extrusion. So let's do that. One way we can do this is with a single face and that lives right here and then we can append to that face and extrude out edges. The other way is we could start with a simple plane, and since the center part doesn't really bend like these edges do, I thought it would be fun to do it with a plane. And um, I've already, like a good cooking show, have this set up to 2x6. I think I tried it 2x10 and it was too many, and then I did 2x6 and it worked pretty good, so... Uh, like all good cooking shows, we'll just go ahead and draw that out here. And then I'll sort of align it with what feels like center there. Now, um, if you've watched any of the other sub D videos, and I hope you have by this point, you'll know that control and shift lets you select either the verts or the edges or the faces in our case. Uh, we were in wireframe, so you couldn't see the face, but I've, I've switched us to ghosted. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just drag select with control shift selected and just using the gumball start to just scale these to where they fit our shape going from top to bottom. I'm not super concerned with the first pass of them lining up perfectly. We'll come back and push and pull a little bit more to make them fit a little better. So we do the first pass and then I usually go top to bottom and then back up once the, um, once the shape starts to look more refined. Now I'm a little larger and I think this one could move up and then possibly, oops, possibly come in here a little bit. All right, I'm not going to fuss with this too much. 
Okay, so there's the center shape done relatively quickly just by using a basic plane. We could then take that and use the offset sub D command up here in the sub D toolbar. We'll offset at a distance of one. It's traveling up in the Z axis, which is good. I don't want both sides enabled here. I do want solid equals yes. So we'll say go and shade that. And we can see that that's extruded everything nice and solid for us, but it's left us with this hard crease. So I'll select that edge loop of the crease and click remove creases. So this turned out really nice. And it reminds me of one of those spoons you eat like the little ice creams with out of the, maybe I'm just hungry. Um, so let's do, let's do an edge in here because the floor has sort of these sharper lines uh, down the middle of them. And I want to recapture some of that. So we can use the insert edge loop and I'll select the main one running down the middle there and I'll right click. And then I want to make sure that I have both sides equals yes. I'm in proportional mode over absolute. I like this as it's kind of giving me a nicer flare here than um, absolute. It Absolute's trying to keep me that set distance apart all the way. And so I like that it keeps the top a little better there and proportional. So I'll go with that. And then I'm holding control shift and grabbing that center point there for both the top and the bottom. And that gives me a little bit of definition and contour like I want. If you wanted it to be sharper than that, you could either add more edges through there, uh, or you could sit and refine that edge spacing to give you the look that you want. Okay, so we're gonna call we're gonna call this one we're gonna call this one finished. So that was with the the plane. The next thing I'll do is with just the single face. And so let's go back to the top view. We'll come up here and find the single face, which is right here. And then I'll just draw one to get us started. So we're going to pick four corners. And ta-da. And so that gives us just a single face. If we hit tab, we can see the four corners here in the box mode. Or even if we hit uh, F10 to turn the points on, we can see where that lives. Um, it, it's a little harder to kind of point and grab those individual points when in this mode. I got lucky right there. Sometimes I pick the edge to where I can see where that point's going to be, and then I can I can jump in there and get at it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the append to sub D command, and then it wants to know what we're going to append to, which is our new face. And then I'm going to do some, some command line tricks here and make this thing do some other stuff. Yours will probably say ngon in the polygon type by default. So as we extrude out here, it'll want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's, it's going to go on until we right click to stop. But I want it to know that I'm done drawing after I make it to a quad. So we'll change that to quad. And then I want to do it from an existing edge, so I don't really have to snap to anything. So we'll say that's good, and then multiple faces are good. So now as I move around out here, since I told it to use from edge, you can see it highlights those edges. So I'll click on one, and then I'll immediately just start picking the next two points. Since we did quad, it knows the first two points are chosen for us already from the edge. So we started with this edge, so that's point one and two, and then we're just establishing points three and four. And then if for some reason you mess this up, uh, you can just do undo up there, and then Rhino forgives you, and you're allowed to continue. C 
see I don't I didn't like that. So let's do this one more time. And there we go. Okay, I won't fuss over this too much. Uh, so this looks a little goofy. We'll come back and clean that up. But I'm going to select the the piece here and click append again. And then just real quickly, I want to do the bottom portion. And you know when you're not um, when you're not talking about it and just doing it, you tend to get it done pretty quickly. All right. Okay, so now there's really a lot of uh, faces in this thing, or I like to think of them as uh, little brick pavers in a sidewalk for whatever weird reason. So sometimes defining these smooth curvatures can be much easier if you don't have quite as many faces to contend with. So what I try to do is I try to delete some and see how many I can get away with deleting before I get myself into trouble and I can't make the shape anymore. It's always easier to control this stuff when it has fewer edges and faces in it. I couldn't really see where those end ones were, so that makes a good reason to go with the box mode. Okay, so we can keep chasing this, or we can just say that it's good enough for our TV broadcast here, like any good cooking show. Okay, so let's let's say that this is this is good enough. Um, it's really not, but I want to fix that inside edge, but I'll leave it alone. Okay, um, I want to repeat that offset again. This time the arrows are pointing in a di direction that I don't want, so we're going to say flip all and go ahead and hit go. Just like before, remove those edges. Now, to get this sort of sharp crease in here, we need to get an edge loop running right down the middle. And um, if we if we double click this and say OK, uh, first let's not do both sides. It it doesn't it doesn't loop through like like I want. So that's no good. If you look at the icon here. On left click, it does a loop, and so a loop is when the edges are end to end. If you look at the right click tool tip, it says an edge ring, and a ring is more like uh, ladder rungs uh, where they go this way, like the cross sections. So I'll right click to get a ring, and then if you just pick one, uh, Rhino is super smart and figures out that you probably wanted all those, which I do. So then we'll say OK, and um, again, I'm in this proportional offset mode because I like it. And I want to go, I want to kind of go out towards the edge here, and I'll show you why in just a second. Now, I want to take that one, instead of right clicking, I want to left click this time and get that loop, and then I'm going to come back in towards uh, the center, and maybe this time I do absolute so that I can drill down exactly where I want it, and I'll put it there. And so this gives me two loops that are kind of near each other that are going to create a lot of dramatic influence as we start to play with them. Now, if you, if you double left click this, it can be hard to sort of hold control and deselect that stuff without deselecting everything. But if you go into selection filters here and put it in edge mode, if you double left click that, 
Now when you hold control and fence select those, uh, it unselects what you're looking for there. And I'll pull these up and then I'll pull these back down and start to create some of that inner contouring So that makes that a little sharper. Okay, and I and I told you I wanted to fix that. It's just making me bonkers. All right, I promised myself I wouldn't get lost in the details because it's easy to sit and explore shape with sub D that you kind of got to know when to just leave it alone and finish it. <laughs> okay, so that got a little bit thicker, so I can just do that, scoot that down. And then we could mirror this to the other side, and then for the band across the center there, I think just a simple primitive cube would get the job done. So let's come up here and say we want a cube. Uh, we've got two by two by two. That's fine for me. I'll make it a little larger than what we see in our image here. And I think to square off the bottom a little bit, I'll do that. I'll hold... Um, Control shift and just sort of flatten that out. Well, it's sort of like a twinkie shape there Then maybe up here uh, Instead of extruding I could just scale it inwards a bit And then maybe Maybe we pull it down a hair to Give it more of a bend Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. We could sit and add more detail. We could add some ribs to this by um, offsetting both sides here, and then uh, pulling in the center and start to give it a little bit more of a, a little more flair to the fleur. Okay, we're finished with our image. Now let's see. I haven't really paid much attention to scale. And the other thing that I haven't paid much attention to is to how center we are with the... Uh, well, that's pretty close, but um, not bad for not paying attention. Um, now let's put a, put a ring out here and get this thing connected up. So I'll make a circle from origin past zero here. And then 16.5 is a US size six. So I'll just right click and accept that. And now um, this is only about uh, a little under a millimeter. So that's, that is no good at all. So we're going to transform that again. And what I want to do is I want to scale it 1D uh, up a little bit. And then I also want to see how big this thing is. It's pretty large across the top. So let's, um, let's scale this down some. And we might actually, we might pull all this down a little bit. Okay. So that fits up top pretty well. Again, with the scale 1D. I 
so that should go across the finger pretty well. In fact, let's go ahead and these aren't quite sitting on the finger rail. Neither is this one. And then there's our cube. Let's take all of this now and we'll run the transform bend. And I want to find the quad of that circle. Hold shift for ortho. I've got um, symmetric equals yes, but it looks like I've got a funny snap there. So let's say into the quad. There we go. Now our bend is looking a little better. I'm going to snap to the other quad point. Now we know we have a nice arc going down. Okay, so now it's conformed to the finger rail. There's there's certainly some more refinement that could be done to the shape, which we can still do. But I'm going to go ahead and just draw a two-point circle from the edge here, two millimeters thick. And then we'll run a sub-D sweep one on this rail and this cross section. All right, so here comes the shank. And we're set up at 8 by 8, and that looks good. If anything, you could decide whether or not you wanted more cross sections in it. But I think 8 by 8 is really good. So we'll go ahead and say go there. And then selecting the faces, I'll just delete those. OK, let's hit delete. And then I just want to fill this hole up. And so I'm going to click Fill Hole. And this is the boundary. I'll right click and I'll select Automatic. And Rhino did an excellent job there of figuring out a nice quad patch at the end. So next I want to connect these two together using the Bridge command. And so with Faces still selected, I'll do these two. But we only have one here. So let's go ahead and grab this edge. We'll turn off the selection filter. Let's grab, that's not going to work. We need to use the ring. So we'll say that's our ring. And we'll just go right in the middle. And then let's go ahead and go back to faces. So you and you will bridge to you and you. Oh yeah. I never get tired of that. And then holding shift, you and you will go to you and you. So let's repeat the bridge. And there we go. Now, uh, instead of doing all the hard work again, let's just run reflect. So we'll say reflect along the y-axis, keep this side, right click, and there we go. You could also go ahead and just start establishing that everywhere. So y-axis, keep this side, go. Why not you as well? Y-axis, right click. Oh, I got too speedy. Click that side, there we go, I forgot to click. Okay, so now, um, Let's get rid of this crease that's on here. I don't really care about that anymore. There's still another crease sort of shooting through here, so we'll get rid of that. And then if I select both of these, we should be able to just pull that down back onto the rail. Um, in hindsight, I would have made that just a little bit thicker, but it's going to work for... Uh, for our example here. And so there we go. It's it's ready to go. Um, if we wanted to square up the finger hole a little bit, we could pull these edges out, and then it'll be less round, but still like a comfort fit on the inside. Then lastly, let's 
go over here and find a material. So let's say metal. And how about uh, silver, but I'll make it just a little bit lighter. Assign to objects. Rendered mode, there we go. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from this. And thanks for watching.